Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello and welcome friends to the second and concluding lecture on Iqbal. In the first lecture we have discussed Iqbal, his political life, influences on his thought and his conception of khudi or self and also uh, his ideas about uh, reconstruction of religious thought in Islam. In this lecture we are going to discuss his thought on community and uh, religion and also uh, how it is connected to um, uh, this idea of community. So, um, in this lecture, we will discuss his views on religion, nation and how these ideas on religion and nation is deeply connected with the idea of community in the sense of calm and millet. And as we have discussed in Iqbal, he was trying to reconcile between two contradictory forces of uh, nationalism as a territorially defined um, uh, geography on the one hand and the universal appeal of humanism in Islam or global fraternity on the other. So, Iqbal in a way uh, swimming uh, against the tide of his time in a uh, sense of establishing or articulating the idea of pan-Islamism or millet as a religious community in Islam and trying to reconcile it with the uh, idea of nationalism. So, uh, in this lecture we are going to discuss his thought on calm, millet and how these are uh, embedded in his overall uh, thinking and theorization of um, uh, Islam or Islamic religion. Uh, we will begin with uh, his criticism to Sufism from which he derived some of the ideas, but he also critiqued the Indian uh, variant of um, uh, Sufism which tries to um, articulate the individual and his role in a sense of connecting with the higher spiritual self by withdrawing from the real world. Iqbal on the other hand wanted the individual to constantly act upon his thinking and belief and we have seen in the previous lecture in his philosophy of self how he defined individual as someone who act and someone act that defines him and not um, just his uh, thinking or thought about society, politics and religion. So, to look at his critique of Sufism, what we find is Iqbal was influenced by many ideals of Sufism and however, he did not accept Sufism and its uh, philosophy as a whole. What he accepts from Sufism is the teaching of Sufis as it emphasizes on the role of intuition in the process of cognition. This is opposite to the western focus on rationalism or reason as the basis of thought. Uh, Iqbal derived his understanding of cognitive process or thinking from the Islamic tradition especially Sufism which believes in the role of intuition in the cognitive process. However, Iqbal has also problems with many of the teachings of Sufism. So, he completely rejected the negative attitude of the Sufis towards reason and rationality and its emphasis more and more on experience or the feelings or the emotions or the belief systems. So, Iqbal was trying to reconcile between this intuitions, beliefs and faith on the one hand and reason and rationality on the other hand and there uh, is the contribution of Iqbal's in the uh, reconstruction of religious thought in Islam and he was also critical of their preachings of man's withdrawal from the real world. So, in many of the religious doctrines including Su Sufism, there is this understanding of human being and its uh, true nature uh, and realization of such true nature by withdrawing the self from the real world, the outer world. 
uh, Iqbal has a very radical understanding of such, um, um, uh, such viewpoints where he believes that man must act upon or ceaselessly uh, engage with the real world and that engagement enables him or her to realize the true nature of the self and it also help in the reconstruction of society and transformation of the uh, social political, uh, uh, political uh, condition of the community. So, uh, many of the uh, degradation that he saw in India as a whole particularly among the Muslim community, he believed in uh, uh, this uh, um, ideals that such teachings of withdrawal from the real world uh, lead to a stagnation or withdrawal and resignation of individual to the fate and to the divinity. He wanted a self individual who is, uh, who is uh, defining himself, who is acting upon his uh, beliefs and that acting enables the self to, to define itself and not the divine intervention uh, or the fate as we have seen in his idea of um, idea of, uh, of self or khudi, asrare khudi. So, uh, in Iqbal there is the um, um, deriving of certain ideals from Sufism, but also rejection of many of its negative teachings which teach the individual to withdraw from the real world. So, Iqbal believed that the mysticism of Sufi cannot contribute to the overall development of human personality and therefore, he want the reconciling between mysticism, intuitions or some religious doctrines uh, or principles in Islam with the modern uh, rational or uh, uh, logical arguments of uh, the, uh, uh, the modern continental analytical philosophy. So, he wanted to combine the two to, uh, to redefine the notion of self the notion of self within the Islam and on that basis he also criticized the western conception of self and his uh, theory of politics or millet or com is defined by such, uh, such reinterpretation of Islam in the light of modern knowledge and thinking. If you look at his views on religion and Islam, particularly his uh, speech in Allahabad as a president of the Muslim League. He said that religion is a power of the utmost importance in the life of individual as well as for the states. Now, this point is crucial to understand the shift in uh, Iqbal from a patriotic uh, Indian nationalist to a supporter of separatist Muslim nationhood and gradually to a kind of pan-Islamic uh, thinker in terms of Millat. Uh, Millet as a community of Islam as a creed. So, in his uh, whole um, articulation and thought process, religion becomes the basis, the very foundation of all his philosophy of self or community or nationhood or uh, uh, the pan-Islamic uh, notion of community. So, he developed the critique to Congress notion of Swaraj or politics which emphasize on the secular notion of the politics, whereas Iqbal was promoting or articulating a polity which will be guided by the Islamic principle or the Islamic laws. Of course, it will be reinterpreted with the modern knowledge with reason and you know, he was for liberal interpretation, but nonetheless his polity or his understanding of polity and state is something which should be guided by the uh, religion. So, uh, religion for and therefore, he, uh, he argued in many of his speeches and writings against any form of Swaraj and politics which is, uh, which is uh, uh, rejecting the religion and professing secularism which he considered as the region of decline in the West. Uh, he was uh, very critical of that. So, he said that Swaraj for him has no meaning unless it also include the religion and religious teaching. So, uh, for Iqbal, religion and its power remain very fundamental and uh, it has application for the individual self and also for the polity of the state. This is further implied in his statement that Islam is something more than a creed. For uh, Iqbal, religion is not narrowly defined as a belief system or merely as a faith or a creed. 
but for Iqbal, Islam is something more than a creed, it is a community or a nation. This we will discuss when we will discuss Qom and Miller, but for Iqbal, the idea of Islam or the Islamic laws and tradition is much more than a creed or a belief system. The membership of Islam as a community is not determined by birth, locality, naturalization. It consists in the identity of belief, the ideal, the principle, the moral belief system or the ethical belief system of uh, self and how self is manifestation of divinity and what is the ideal of the self and this realization of divinity in self is possible within a community and that community is the community of Islam. So, he, uh, he considered this um, idea of Islam as a community or as a nation which is not determined or its membership is not determined by birth, locality, naturalization. So, all the boundaries of birth, race or geography is transcended by this um, new interpretation of Islam and the role of Islam in governing individual and the collective life uh, in Islam which in Iqbal's philosophy which provide a kind of equality, a kind of comradeship among the believer of Islam which uh, determines the nature of the community or the uh, nation which is a kind of continuum for Iqbal. So, Iqbal argued that Islam is a philosophy of life, the embodiment of definite historical and cultural tradition, social and legal institution and a way of living. He also believed that working of Islam as a culture is inspired by a specific ethical ideal that belief in one God, Supreme Almighty and that Supreme Almighty is manifested through its believer. The individual self is the uh, manifestation of such, uh, such divinity and the objective of the life for Iqbal is to realize such, uh, such divinity in the individual self through constantly acting upon one's belief system and not merely by thinking or by resigning or by withdrawing from the, uh, from the real world. So, um, for Iqbal, Islam is a philosophy of life which is embodiment of a definite historical and cultural tradition and also the social and legal. So, he wanted to have a modern system of collective consensual uh, decision making, but that decision making should be based on istihad. That is the collective argument about policies, laws, institution and the frameworks to govern the modern collective life, but that should be guided by a particular belief system or a philosophy which is provided by the Islam, which is beyond the narrowly defined or interpretation of Islam as a merely as a belief system or creed. So, in Iqbal, we also find that he never equated Muslim nationalism with religious intolerance and with narrow communal outlook. So, for him, the Islam and Islamic religion is interpreted or projected in a broader liberal way which can include all kind of differences or plurality and yet believe in one particular almighty or God as a way of combining the difference and yet believing in something to which all agree despite of their different or plural characteristics. So, for Iqbal, the definition of Muslim nationalism was not about religious intolerance or communal in outlook. He said that Islam does not bifurcate the unity of man into irreconcilable duality of a spirit and matter. In Islam, God and the universe, a spirit and the matter are organic to each other. So, this is also Iqbal's response to the modern conception of self, a spirit and the matter. So, there is lots of debate in analytical philosophy about the primacy of a spirit over matter or among the materialism about this duality of God or the man or nature or the man, Iqbal tries to uh, transcend such binary or duality by uh, explaining it as a kind of continuum, as a kind of constant ceaseless movement for acquiring new and newer, uh, newer form or, um, uh, or a spirit. 
So, in Iqbal's the idea of nation also is a kind of continuum. So, as an individual believer in Islam, one can realize its true nature or true meaning only in a community. That community of Islam can be either Qaum which is a nation or Millat which is a kind of Islamic community which encompasses all the national boundaries. So, in Iqbal there is a kind of constant unfolding of oneself from individual to the larger and to the still, uh, still larger kind of thing. So, in uh, such definition there is a kind of organic connection between each other rather than the duality or binary as often seen in many, uh, uh, many uh, philosophy and uh, thought, uh, uh, thought process. So, Iqbal openly acknowledged that the reformation of Islam would serve the socio-political ends as well. So, in a sense, Iqbal is not someone trying to preach the religious or the supremacy of a particular, uh, a particular form of worship or belief system. For Iqbal, uh, Islam is something much more than merely a belief system or a creed and he thought that if the ijtihad that we have discussed, the liberal interpretation or uh, per, uh, permitting the individual or uh, giving the permission to individual to uh, interpret the Islamic laws particularly liberally in their own, um, um, in their own ways, then it can also lead to the socio-political ends as well and the social and the political policies can also be formulated on the basis of such liberal interpretation of Islam. Here it is also significant to note that Iqbal is also making a difference between the complete freedom or the free will to interpret istihad by the individual on the one hand and also submitting to the will of God on the other. So, this um, continuum from the liberal interpretation of istihad and submitting to the will of God in a form of community that is something also very unique to uh, Iqbal which is very distinct from the modern uh, western conception of atomistic self thinking and realizing its own self the way it thinks and act upon in an isolatory atomistic way. Uh, Iqbal is, uh, is conceptualizing the individual in connection with the community and that is something very uh, unique in his thought. So, he explained the need to reform Islam by citing progress of the development of social thought and science in the West. So, many of his ideas about self, the ego, the rationality, the role of logic comes from his engagement with the modern Western uh, uh, philosophy. So, he believed then that it is the duty of the leaders of the world of Islam today to understand that the real meaning of what has happened in Europe and then move forward with self-control and a clear insight into the ultimate aims of Islam as a social policy. So, he believed that uh, uh, Islam can be a guide for the uh, public, political uh, and social policies uh, among the Muslims community uh, as a whole. And he, um, he cautioned or uh, he invited the leaders uh, among the Muslim communities to realize the true meaning of modern science or modern rationality and its role to reinterpret Islam in the light of modern circumstances in the uh, according to the requirements of the modern life and that can perhaps lead to a kind of social policy which will be in continuation with the ultimate aim of Islam. So, the uh, religious embeddedness of uh, Iqbal remains very foundational even when he is trying to reinterpret Islam liberally or uh, the tradition of ijtihad. His ideas on khudi, the self, the qom which is nation or nationality or millat which is the universal community on the basis of Islam. So, if you look at these notions in Iqbal, we find that the most significant contribution to political thought of Iqbal were these twin concepts of khudi which is self-affirmation or ego and the millat used by Iqbal to refer to the religious community 
and equated with nation. So, a com and millet is a kind of continuation based on the religious ideals and uh, laws of Islam. So, uh, this connection, this twin principle of khudi or the self on the one hand and the uh, notion of uh, millat or the religious community on the basis of Islam on the other is something which is uh, the uh, contribution of Iqbal to political thought. So, what we find is that although he championed the need for the free development of the khudi or the self, the individual, he saw the need to counterbalance it with the concept of be khudi. Be khudi in Iqbal's use essentially refer to the force that brings the individual ego in line with the social and community ego. So, there is a kind of new interpretation by looking at the comparative traditions of uh, Islamic uh, tradition of self, intuitions and ethical moral principle on the one hand and the modern uh, western conception of self on the other. So, uh, uh, so, Iqbal in his conception of individual where he focuses on this free development of individual um, in his notion of khudi or self, he also somewhat interpret or counterbalance it with this um, um, uh, collective, collective self or the role of community. So, the khudi, the self can attain or uh, can uh, achieve or realize its own self in a community, not in isolation from the community and not by being autonomous or uh, uh, free from the community and the uh, um, uh, larger collective self. So, uh, so uh, in Iqbal's philosophy and writings and um, uh, works, we find a very delicate balance or counterbalance between the um, uh, free will or complete free will of the self to develop itself on the one hand and also how he uh, he want that individual to submit to the collective ego or the ego of the community and that way he thought that individual can realize its own true meaning as prescribed in the Islamic laws and tradition. Here the use of term millet in Iqbal's philosophy is very interesting in a sense that the term is generally used in Quran, this word millet which is also a form of community of pan-Islamic community based on um, Islam or a, a belief in Islam. Uh, this term he, uh, he has taken from Quran where it refers to a religious community, but the interpretation he gave is along the line of modern polity where there was debate about League of Nations or the community of the nations or the uh, global institution. In such a way, he uh, propounded this idea of millet or pan-Islamism which he has taken from many other Muslim scholars and preachers. So, his interpretation of Islam as a polity led him to postulate that the individual ideally belongs to a supra-territorial community of believers, believers in one faith, one absolute being that he calls, there is also a shift in this idea of community from calm to millet. So, uh, he, he also because of the immediate circumstances or the historical circumstances of his time supported this idea of calm uh, or that definition of calm based on religion. So, therefore, he uh, championed the cause of separate statehood for, uh, for Muslims in Indian subcontinent. But he was not satisfied or in his matured philosophy, he certainly talked more about a, uh, a millet and he uh, rejected the whole idea of nation and nationalism like, uh, uh, like Tagore. So, there is a shift in his thought from uh, calm to millet and what we find is that in Iqbal earlier emphasized on Islam as national community and uh, he articulated Pakistan on the basis of this homogeneity or similarity or a kind of religious gift to the Muslims in subcontinent which automatically or naturally enables them to form as a people, as a community. So, his idea of calm as, as a national community, he emphasized in his earlier writings, whereas in the later period or in his later writings, he proceed to emphasize on Islam 
as a part of millat which is a religious community of those who believe in the same god or the, who believes in the absolute of that almighty so he elaborated that the body and soul of millat are composed of a belief in the unity of god and this very unity is the basis of unity of thought among the muslims so the global community of uh, islam as a millat is possible because of this unity in uh, in um, uh, a belief about the unity of uh, uh, the god there is all uh, there is one god that is absolute god and that belief enables a kind of unity of thought among different races different territorial communities or linguistic communities who may follow the islam and yet they develop a similarity in outlook in their thought in their polity and uh, iqbal gradually emphasized more on such idea of uh, millat as the true community or as a ultimate objective of islam and the way he was trying to reinterpret islam not merely as a religious doctrine but also as a guide for the political community so iqbal clearly visualized that muslim as part of a wider nation that is a supra nation not uh, uh, geographically or territorially defined nation of believers born together by the teachings of the prophet and the message of the quran so that is something which unite which give a kind of similarity in outlook and in thought among different groups different races different geographies of uh, uh, the believers in quran or the message of prophet so therefore we can clearly see a transition in his thought from muslim nationalism to a pan islamic thinker or someone who supported the pan islamic unity so he as a philosopher however never clearly separate the concept of religious community as a millat or pan islamism and the national community as a qaum and that uh, although he tried to distinguish these two concepts he was not very consistent it is because he stated indian muslims as a nation in his famous presidential address of 1930s but in his opinion this did not mean that any religious community constituted a nation so there is a kind of tension in this concept of qaum and millat uh, millat in uh, iqbal's thought here on the one hand he um, he um, promoted or articulated the idea of millat as the ultimate objective of islam and all the nations of islamic world should unite to form such uh, such community and he began to write in person also because person is the uh, mean uh, mode of communication among the uh, muslim muslim world so uh, gradually he uh, he moved away from his writings in urdu to a pers- to persian writing and his intimate knowledge of persian enabled him to conceptualize uh, such a world community of islam on the basis of islamic teachings and laws but he also supported and promoted the idea of pakistan on the basis of religion and so therefore the qaum and millat remain a kind of um, uh, uh, inconsistent um, um, ideals or a kind of tension in iqbal's thought and philosophy so uh, to understand this more we can take this two couplets from iqbal and one can understand this tension of qaum and millat in his thought so he wrote it in this tension one can understand from this writing of iqbal where he says our essence is not bound to any place neither is our heart of india or syria or room room here he is referring to rumi a mystic figure who profoundly wrote on the idea of self and uh, iqbal was greatly influenced by uh, by his uh, teaching so he writes that our essence is not bound to any place in the geographical sense also neither is our heart of india or syria or room nor any fatherland do we profess except islam so islam is the basis of millat or the ultimate allegiance for any muslim believer or any believer in islam so they do not 
confine their allegiance and loyalty to a particular nation which is geographically uh, or territorially defined, but something which is uh, religiously defined, which is Millat. And therefore, he wanted the believers to believe in such community of pan-Islamic nations. So, further on we can find that China and Arabia are ours, so is India ours. We are Muslims and the whole world is our country. So, it is a kind of transformation in his thought about the role of Islam or how one can constitute a community of the world on the basis of Islamic laws or the Islamic principles. And therefore, for Iqbal, establishment of a Muslim state or a nation in Indian subcontinent was not an end in itself, but a means to achieve a higher goal by in integrating the national identity with the world millet. So, he supported the creation of Pakistan as a separate nation, but that was not an end in itself. For Iqbal, that was a means to achieve something higher, something superior, that is the community of Islam, the millet. This understanding of millet in Iqbal was based on these two principles. One was the absolute equality of all the members of the community. So, there is no discrimination on the basis of race, language or the geographical uh, location or the territory. For him, uh, the absolute uh, equality of all members, the whole idea of fraternity or brotherhood, the true meaning in Islam becomes one of the founding principle of this idea of Millat in Iqbal. So, absolute equality of all members of the community and B, the love of God is absolutely supreme. So, the second principle of this millet is the will of Allah or will of God. So, therefore, in his conception of self also, while he wanted the individual to define himself or herself, yet should be willing to the, uh, willing to submit himself or herself to the will of God or uh, the ego of community or the collective self. So, that is uh, something which uh, constitute his, uh, uh, his idea of Millat as well, which is based on these two principles, one on um, this absolute equality of all the members of the community and the second, uh, this belief in one God which is absolutely supreme. So, this kind of pan-Islamism will bring about according to Iqbal, a, a spiritual democracy. And uh, this is something which is an alternative to the secular or the western modes of democracy and its beliefs in uh, this dichotomization of different spheres of life between polity, economy, uh, uh, polity, economy and uh, religion on the other hand. And religion recedes to the private, uh, private life. For Iqbal, religion should be at the forefront of all, uh, all sphere of life and more so in the collective, uh, collective life of the community. So, he believes that this idea of pan-Islamism will bring about a, a spiritual democracy, which is the ultimate aim of Islam, in which the many can become one without sacrificing their plural characteristics. So, this is his idea of pan-Islamism or millet, where uh, all the communities, despite of their different characteristics, different physical uh, uh, outlook, different um, uh, language, uh, different races can form a solidarity, can form a um, brotherhood on the basis of these two principles and that can lead to a kind of a spiritualized democracy which is the ultimate aim of Islam, the way he tries to use Islam for the political transformation in the community. So, now to discuss about his views on nation and nationalism, we find Iqbal's critique of nation state and his call for political reorganization of India, where the result of his attempts to relocate the nation along the lines of religion. So, for him, Muslims in Indian subcontinent is automatically then constitute a nation or a people which he felt was only way to secure the proper development of the individual. So, Iqbal's reformulation of the concept of nation and nationalism should not simply be understood as a reassertion of pan-Islamism and therefore, one needs to uh, deeply engage with these concepts of nation and millet in Iqbal. Uh, there is no kind of either or one 
in place of the other. There is a kind of continuum in his thought about uh, individual, the community in the form of Qom and then finally uh, Millet. Iqbal, uh, who is also known as Alama Iqbal, rejected the ideology of nationalism and the modern nation state structure as they originated in the West. Like many other Indian thinkers such as Gandhi and Tagore, he was very critical of the colonial influence and the mere transplantation of western political ideas and institution, Iqbal argued, would only serve to perpetuate colonial domination even after the decolonization. So, there is a some kind of uh, originality uh, and critique to the uh, blind imitation of western concepts and uh, ideals um, um, by many, uh, many leaders and thinkers in Indian subcontinent. And like Gandhi and Tagore, Iqbal was able to see that, that even after the political independence, if one disconnect oneself from one's own tradition, one's own religion, then perhaps the, uh, it will lead to the perpetu uh, perpetualization of colonialism even after India attained the independence. So, he gradually developed a critique of nationalism and in his poem, khizr e rah that means the guided path where he also described the future of Islamic polity is a work in which Iqbal made reference to the political events which had shaken the Muslim world. He described western civilization and nationhood as the narcotics of imperialism which leads to exploitation of one nation to the other. And uh, the idea of nationalism, the self-interest and uh, the perpetualization or maximization of self-interest uh, which leads to competition and ultimately to war and, um, um, uh, and conflicts, um, uh, Iqbal followed uh, or understood such, uh, such negative uh, or destructive forces in western civilization and nationhood and therefore, he criticized such ideals of nation, nationalism and statecraft as it emerged in modern West. So, Iqbal declared nationalism to be the greatest enemy of Islam, which prevented the formation of the global pan-Islamic community in the form of Millat. So, writing to Sayyid Muhammad Sahid Aluddin Jafri in 1923, he noted that the export of the political ideals of nationalism into West had spurred him to write on the nature of true Islam. He stated that though he had been one of the first in India to call for a Mutahida Qomiyat, that is composite or united nationalism. So, unlike uh, Sir Sayyid Ahmad Khan, uh, he wanted Muslims in India to participate in all India struggle for political independence. So, he was uh, in the beginning in support of this composite or combined um, uh, nationalism. He rejected such views as his idea mature and emphasized more and more on Millat than on the idea of nation which he believes as a kind of enemy of Islam which prevented the formation of the global community of Islam. So, his study of Islam had led him to conclude that nationalism was not only incompatible with Islam, but it was a threat to the very principle of Islam which is about the realization of true God or absolute uh, belief in that God and that belief in God enables a kind of absolute equality among the members of uh, uh, members of the believers and he believes that the fragmentation of such believers into different nationality and nation is the per, uh, uh, greatest threat to the uh, Islam itself. So, to look at his uh, vision for Pakistan, we find that his ideology of Muslim nationalism preceded, uh, preceded the spread of ideas of pan-Islamism which asserts the necessity of uniting on the basis of Islam irrespective irrespective of state, territory, ethnic, racial and national differences. So, his gradual shift was to form a global community of Islam, Millat or pan-Islamism. But in the beginning, he was also in support of a separate nationhood in Indian subcontinent for the, for the Muslims. So, he believes that Islam as a means of uniting for resisting the domination of waste and it is necessity of the social progress and independent development of the people in the East. However, he agrees with the view of Muslim as a super class and supranational national entity and that remains very foundational in his philosophy.
philosophy. So, he emphasized on the religious isolation of Muslim community as well as the blending of the concepts of religious and national unity in his overall understanding. So, in a letter on March 28, 1909, he wrote, I myself have been of the view that religious differences should disappear from the country and even now act on this principle in my private life. But now I think that the preservation of their separate national entities is desirable for the Hindus and Muslims. The vision of the common nationhood in India is a beautiful ideal and has a poetic appeal. But looking to the present condition and the unconscious trends of the two appears incapable of fulfillment and therefore, he supported uh, this uh, uh, combination of religion with the emerging idea of nation and uh, nationhood. So, from 1930s he arrived at the conclusion that his ideas of equality and freedom could be embodied only in the Islamic state and that consequently the Muslims of India had no other option but to fight for the self-determination and the creation of Pakistan and that is how he becomes the spirit behind the ideals of Pakistan. So, uh, one can also find his uh, struggle with this idea of nation and nationalism and the role of religion in his ideal of nation and nationalism in his letters to Nehru. So, he writes, nationalism in the sense of love of one's country and even readiness to die for it, its honor is a part of Muslim faith. It comes into conflict with Islam only when it begins to play the role of a political concept and claims to be the principle of human solidarity demanding that Islam should recede to the background of a mere private opinion and cease to be a living factor in the national life. And that is his whole criticism of the secular notion of politics or the nationhood promoted by the Congress. Uh, he wanted uh, Islam or the religion to be at the forefront of the national life and that is how he uh, conceptualized Pakistan as a Islamic uh, nation or Muslims in Indian subcontinent to have a, uh, a nation or a state of their own where they can govern themselves according to their own religious tradition or beliefs. So, he further writes that nationalism was an independent problem for Muslims only in those countries where they are in the minority. In countries with a Muslim majority, nationalism and Islam are practically identical, but in countries where Muslims are in minority, their demand for self-determination as cultural unification is completely justified. So, that is something which is based on his belief in Islam and its teaching which enables the individual to realize his individual, uh, his self and also the community of believers uh, to, uh, to govern itself according to the laws and uh, um, laws and principle of uh, Islam. So, therefore, here it also seems that the nationalism as such is not a problem for the Muslims. It becomes a problem when religion is receded into the background merely as a private opinion, something which has no role in the public, political, national life. Iqbal was against such ideals and he wanted whether uh, a country is dominated by Muslim majority, then there is no problem because the religion and nation is identical in such, uh, such a country. But when there is a uh, Muslim which is in minority, then their demand for uh, self-determination or cultural innovation is justified because they want to govern themselves according to their own laws or their own traditions. So, that is how he thought about a nation and despite a uh, nation being enemy or a kind of obstruction for the formation of millet, he supported for the immediate uh, cause formation of separate statehood on the basis of uh, Islam or religion. So, now to conclude, we find that the challenges to understand Iqbal lies in the fact that the religion was the basis of all his philosophical formulations. So, his notion of self or bekhudi, selflessness, 
his nation of Qom or nationhood or the Millat, the global community of Islam, every uh, conception of uh, his thought is based on his belief in the uh, Islamic laws and Islamic teachings. The controversy that continued to shroud the legacy of Alamma Iqbal resulted in appropriating or misappropriating his name to legitimize various causes and socio-political stances. Championed by some as one of the chief founders of Pakistan, he continues to be heralded by others as the unfailing patriot of India and that is the controversial legacies of Iqbal whether he should be appropriated or projected as a national poet of Pakistan or as spirit behind the Shia dominated um, uh, Iran or as a patriot, um, patriotic leader of India. And there is uh, the contentious um, uh, nature of debates and discussion regarding the appropriation of Iqbal and his legacy. But in, in his thought, we see uh, the emphasis of uh, emphasis on religion and uh, embeddedness of his religious thought on his philosophy of self and the uh, community and, uh, and his uh, gradual, uh, uh, gradual movement towards the ultimate objective of realizing a community of the world beyond the limitations of uh, geography, geographically defined national territories be it India, Pakistan or, uh, or Syria or any other countries. So, there is this problem in appropriating or misappropriating Iqbal. The importance attached to appropriation of Iqbal legacy is attested to by the fact that both Nehru and Jinnah have in their respective writings claimed the support of Allama Iqbal. Even Rabindranath Tagore remembered on his death, um, uh, he wrote that it is it was a great loss for uh, for india because of his um, uh, teachings and his appeal not just to a particular nation but to a global uh, global humanity and the human ideals in islam he is perfectly articulated in his conception of millat so interestingly attempts have been uh, made to appropriate the figure of iqbal in support of political demands outside of south asia as well so, indeed Iqbal was a prophetic and visionary political thinker which helped in shaping the Muslim renaissance in India or Indian subcontinent along with Sir Sayyid Ahmad Khan as we have discussed in the previous lecture. His comparative approach that is his understanding of Hindu as well as the Muslim tradition on the one hand and Muslim Islamic laws and teachings on the one hand and western philosophy on the other enabled him to criticize western philosophy in the light of Islamic traditions and teachings. At the same time, he also argued for the liberal interpretation or istihad of Islam or Islamic law in the light of modern knowledge and rationality. So, there is a kind of two-way movement in his uh, thinking, in his philosophy, where he responds uh, to the decline of um, uh, waste from his understanding or inspiration from Islamic teachings or principles, while on the other hand he wanted Islamic laws and Quran to be interpreted liberally in the light of modern knowledge and uh, rationality. So, that is a kind of unique contribution of uh, Iqbal. Iqbal's works are often read as a spirit behind the formation of Pakistan, which is not completely true. As we have seen that his thought embedded as it was in the Islamic tradition culminated into the articulation of Millat, the uh, global community of Islam. However, Qom and Millat remained an unresolved tension in his philosophy and thought. Although he rejected the whole concept of nation and nationalities, yet his thought became the basis for the creation of Pakistan and therefore his appropriation as the national poet or the spirit behind the Pakistani nationalism or nationhood. And it further lead to perhaps somewhat awkwardly in limiting Iqbal and his philosophy to territorial boundary of nation, which was by and large about universal humanism in Islam and had a universal appeal. So, Iqbal and his appropriation and limitation of his thought to a particular nation and nationality is something which is 
which is uh, constantly being done, appropriation and misappropriation by different, uh, 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 different communities, different nationalities. But uh, Iqbal by and large was arguing more and more about formation of a polity or a system of governance and a state uh, which is guided by the Islamic laws and Islamic principles and which helps in the realization of the objective as enshrined in, uh, in Islam which is basically on the basis of this twin principle of uh, absolute equality among the members of the believers and also the belief in one supreme, uh, supreme God which is absolutely uh, uh, almighty or absolutely uh, supreme. So, it is very easy to limit him as a thinker of a particular nation, but uh, the contribution of Iqbal is to reinterpret uh, Islam and to enable it or to make it relevant for the modern, uh, modern polity, modern life and uh, rescue it from the religious dogmas and the conservative interpretation of ilema by enabling the individual to learn from the Islam and interpret it liberally and realize his or uh, her true, uh, true self which, is, which lies among the community, in the immersion of the community among the believers which is unlike the western conception of self which is in isolation or isolatory or atomistic selves. So, that is some of, uh, some of the uh, uh, emphasis in Iqbal which uh, uh, unfortunately ignored by the uh, many uh, appropriators of, uh, of Iqbal. Uh, so, uh, that is what we have to uh, think about when we uh, theorize or uh, discuss Iqbal and his uh, legacies. So, uh, on this lecture you can uh, refer to some of these books like Ideology of Muslim Nationalism by L. R. Gordon in Iqbal, poet, philosopher of Pakistan and also this takes the development of political philosophy by Rifat Hassan from the same book Iqbal, poet, philosopher of Pakistan and also the Muslims of India. This is the presidential speech of Iqbal in Allahabad in 1930s, incarnation by Sunil Khinnani and these two texts you can refer to understand some of the um, philosophy and some of the themes and thematics we have discussed on Iqbal. So, thanks for listening and thanks for your patience.